Uh, good evening, and I want to welcome everyone to this uh, lecture in our uh, leadership lecture series featuring alumni. But uh, before we get started on the lecture today, I have a few student representatives from CTIDES that want to say a few words. So I'll invite them to come on stage. And Good evening, everyone. Uh, so uh, I'm here to speak about CTIDES. And uh, we are also going to launch our events calendar and Genesis uh, calendar today. So my name is uh, V. Manoj Kumar, and I'm the current uh, student head of CTIDES. So uh, before I go to my presentation, uh, I just wanted to know how many of you know CTIDES. Can I have a show of hands, please? OK, so uh, do you know what we do, and all? how many of you really know what we do, what are the activities? OK, fine. So there are a majority of people who don't know. So for them only, I have uh, made this presentation. Uh, can I have the next slide, please? So what is CTIDES? Uh, CTIDES is the entrepreneurship cell of IIT Madras here. And move on. Continue moving on, please. So uh, our full form is, the acronym is Cell for Technology, Innovation, Development, and Entrepreneurship Support. And we have uh, been around since 1998. And we started incubating companies uh, from 2009. So we have been organizing competitions like Genesis and Breakthrough. Genesis is a social business plan competition. Uh, I'll be going through uh, what is Genesis and how are we going to organize this year in the future slide. And uh, But as a part of it, uh, last year we have organized a, a lecture series where we uh, invited Rashmi Bansal, who is the author of Stay Angry, Stay Foolish. And we also had workshops by uh, Sunil Handa, a professor from IIM Ahmedabad. Next slide. So last year, we have organized events like uh, Weekend Ventures. Uh, so uh, Weekend Ventures is an event where people come and uh, they convert their idea into a prototype through, uh, through the weekend. So And we also organized conferences like Data First, Any and Dot. Uh, and uh, we also had uh, Maski Patshala and uh, other conferences like IITM uh, E-Week, where, we, uh, where it was held at uh, IITM Research Park. So how many of you uh, see TEDx talks, TED talks in YouTube? Very recently, in the, uh, August, we have uh, organized TEDx Mambalam on education. And uh, this was the first TEDx talk on education in India. Uh, so, uh, so following that, we also have uh, online case studies, how innovative are you, lectures, panel discussions, pitch it, and uh, weekend venture and big fight. So uh, move on to the next slide, please. This year, we have a lot of new in initiatives. So uh, we are uh, proposing an insti level business plan competition. And that we are proposing to include it in TechSoc. So we are still in the discussion with the uh, TechSoc uh, coordinators. And uh, so we have TEDx, which is a new event that was introduced. And we also have Big Fight, which is going to be a debate uh, between the entrepreneurs and the students. Next. So we do want you to start networking uh, and pitching and also try participating in the competitions and be active on the groups next so this is the launch of our calendar you can uh, go through it uh, about the events that we are planning uh, throughout the year next slide. next slide please so genesis is our flagship event uh, it is conducted annually, and it is a national business plan competition and social entrepreneurship. Uh, so we were recognized as the Asia's second, uh, second largest uh, business plan competition. And uh, moving on. So this is the schedule for uh, Genesis. Uh, so uh, we are uh, trying to get the portal ready by this weekend. And uh, you can submit your executive summaries be uh, before 1st November. Then uh, we also have awareness camps. Next slide. So the, uh, for the first time in 2014, we have Genesis partnering with CSI and uh, Willgrow, where we'll be organizing awareness camps 
on how to write a business plan, how to write a business plan, and what is social entrepreneurship. And then that will be followed by uh, Wilgros initiative called Unconventional. This is a series of uh, conferences uh, that will take place all over India. And the Chennai, uh, Chennai meet will be happening at IIT Madras. So feel free to contact us. Uh, these are the mail IDs and the URLs. Uh, so uh, www.c-tights.iitm.ac.in. This is the recent website that we acquired uh, from the IITM server. You can contact us at any time. Thank you. I uh, hope to see uh, most of you at, in our events. Thank you. OK, and now for the, the main event of the day. I'm uh, very happy to welcome our alumnus, Mr. Bharat Kumaran, as the speaker today. Uh, his uh, bio speaks for itself. He's a BTEC uh, 2007 mechanical, president's gold medalist, um, coordinator for both Shastra and Sarang, MBA from the Wharton School, um, some uh, career experience with International Finance Corporation, and soon to be working with um, McKinsey in Singapore. So <clears throat> what more can I say? I'm sure he has a lot of very interesting and uh, useful advice and um, words of wisdom for all of you. Uh, I do want to mention that um, in the past month or so, Bharat has been working very closely with a team of alumni volunteers here, helping us um, put together a strategy for fundraising especially, and uh, his inputs have been tremendously helpful. And we are hoping that he will stay involved even as he moves to Singapore and um, continue to work with us. So it's been a pleasure having uh, Bharat with us for the last few weeks, and I invite him to come and talk to you. Make sure that you guys can hear me, first of all. And also see the presentation, because it's all going to be in black. I thought I'll save some energy. So hopefully your career is not as dark as the presentation. All right. Uh, the ones at the back, can you hear me? Just uh, raise your hands up if you can hear me. OK, great. The one at that corner? Fantastic. Let's get started. And, and stop me anytime if you cannot hear me. This is me when I was, I think, about two or three years old. As you can see, I'm a happy kid. And I'm happy because I'm holding something in my hands. And it turns out these are motorcycle keys. And in case you're wondering whether I could ride motorcycles, the answer is absolutely yes. And uh, I thought motorcycles are one of the coolest things I had seen. Uh, they're really cool because they go really fast. Uh, and I was really into speed. And anything mechanical moving at that much speed was really cool to me. But uh, motorcycles didn't happen to be the fastest things that I've seen move around. In fact, those were these things, the trains. Trains were absolutely fascinating to me. Those were the fastest things that I've ever seen move. So much fascinating that I used to take long walks with my grandfather to go train spotting, which is like sit at, hold on a second. Yes, is it OK? Can you hear me? Yes, no? The back? OK, great. So, so much fascinating that, as I mentioned, I used to take long walks with my grandfather just to go train spotting, uh, sit by the train tracks, and watch these beasts go by at like super speed. Um, and uh, in fact, even when I used to travel in trains, I used to ask my dad uh, that I could go and see the train uh, engine, especially the, the real heart of all this power, uh, for as much time as I could. I used to just like love watching these things. So when the question came up, what is it that I want to become once I grow up? The answer was like so damn obvious. I wanted to be an engine driver. It was like crystal clear, like no doubts about it. And uh, I did actually become an engine driver, as you can see. The, the proof is in this photo right here. And uh, it was a very easy choice, and it was like a dream come true. Uh, so it was like my life's ambition achieved when I was like fairly young. And then once again, the question comes up. And this time, it's more difficult to answer. So I was thinking, OK, I've already become what I wanted to become. So what do I do next? And uh, it seems like uh, I like engines. So something uh, which is very close to engines is being an engineer. So I should become an engineer. And it seems like I like uh, mechanical things, like you know, motorcycles and trains. So I should become a mechanical engineer. 
and which is probably the best place to go for uh, mechanical engineering. Someone told me across these gates uh, lies a place where you can walk in and uh, you can study the best mechanical engineering in the whole wide world. And every time I used to drive by, I'm, I'm from Chennai basically, so every time we used to ride on these roads, I used to just like look beyond these gates and used to wonder one day I should be able to walk in. And people used to tell me that uh, you have to write a really, really difficult exam uh, to have the right to walk into these gates. And I think they told me the wrong advice because what I did not know was you could just like walk in and just like sign up at the front gate and it was like so much easy. Uh, nobody told me that unfortunately. So I had to really take a very difficult exam uh, and I'm sure like many of you have taken like all different versions of, uh, of that exam. And uh, after that, I spent some time in this great place, uh, sitting exactly where you guys are sitting right now and, and also graduating successfully at the end of it. And what happens? Once again, the same question comes up, like, what do I do after that? And trust me, this time it was even more difficult to answer that question. So uh, it just happens that when I spend some time at IIT, uh, I happen to read this wonderful book uh, with foreword by uh, Bono, who is uh, legendary. Uh, it talks about the noble idea of uh, ending poverty in the entire world, like no poverty. Uh, it's a big problem in India, of course. It's a big problem in uh, the continent of Africa and almost so many other places. So it seemed like a wonderful idea that somebody is working on something like this. And uh, I also came across this institution called the World Bank. Uh, so I uh, somehow got, managed my way into uh, the World Bank and working for IFC, which is the International Finance Corporation. And this was my office building. Uh, I sat in different uh, positions in the same building, so this is very close to my heart. And uh, I wanted to get really good at what I was doing. So uh, it seems like uh, at, the, at the same time, I also involved a lot of young colleagues uh, across like different divisions, across different organizations. We started this organization called the Youth Youth Community. Uh, we were on the steering committee and we created a lot of events to basically bring together a lot of young people to address the same things, which is like, how do you work on international development? Same question comes up, like, you know, what do you want to do to get, like, really good at it? And uh, the answer that I came up with was, uh, should probably apply to this institute, uh, which seems like an uh, excellent place. Uh, and uh, this place has uh, the best loyals for producing some of the, the best people in being able to manage things. And solving poverty is a big uh, deal, so you need to have, like, good managerial skills. So I applied to this place, but somehow this animal did not seem to like it. So uh, although I tried to explain and rationalize with this animal, I, I couldn't actually make it. So um, I instead took the GMAT and I went to this place and uh, got an MBA from this place. Very recently, I graduated this summer. And uh, guess what happens next? The same question comes up again, like what do I do after that? And uh, it turns out I will be working for this company, which is a very, very great company. Uh, I think there's a talk later today by uh, representatives of McKinsey. Um, I would urge you to attend that. Uh, so I'll be working for McKinsey in Singapore uh, starting very soon in less than a month. Um, so as you can see, the, uh, the question of what kept getting bigger and bigger and bigger at different stages of my life. What seemed like a really easy thing at the beginning uh, seemed to get like really mammoth size uh, more closer towards the end. So I started wondering whether I'm making a fundamental mistake. Why is it getting so much more difficult? Why is it that it's such a uh, difficult question to answer. And it seems like the answer lies in the question itself. I'm asking why. So probably the better question to ask is not a what, but a why. So I could clearly see a difference in the question and the quality of the question that I'm asking could make a difference. And this person agrees. Uh, I think it's a fantastic book that I've read. I totally urge you to like get a copy and try and read this book. Uh, it's written by this person called Simon Sinek, who argues that you've got to start with why. That's the most fundamental question that you have to ask yourself, no matter what you're doing. The why is the most important thing. And this is how he explains it. He says, at the core of almost everything you're doing is a why. And it completely trumps the question of how, which completely trumps the question of what. So all along, I've been focusing on the what. And it seems like it's probably the reason why I was, uh, I was not able to find a common thread. Uh, whereas I should be instead asking a how, or more importantly, I should be asking a why. And instead of going from what to why, the best approach is to actually start from the why and eventually come down to what. And just to give you some analogies, uh, a what is like a job, like you know, whatever job you're doing or whatever, it could be like research, it could be entrepreneurship, it could be like whatever company you're working for, it's just a what, it's just a job. 
Uh, how is more analogous to, let's say, a career? And a why is more analogous to a calling. So it's like much more powerful. Uh, and it can explain a career, and definitely it can explain the, uh, the job choices that you make. And uh, this person seems to agree, and I'm sure you know who Nietzsche is. So he says, he who has a why to live for can bear with almost any how. And maybe you can add a writer saying with almost any how and a what also. So these become insignificant once you have a strong why. And how do I find out like, you know, what is the, the why? And like, how do I find out the answer to the why question? What is the, uh, the purpose of life question? And it uh, seems like a lot of uh, wisdom points towards like meditation, soul searching, uh, whatever is the name for it, spirituality, uh, religion. And I personally am not a big expert on that field. Uh, I haven't had like much success. I mean, not to bring down the thunder from the effectiveness of that method, I would urge you to try it out for yourself and figure that out. Uh, it's not something that has personally worked for me, specifically speaking. So uh, I haven't had like much breakthroughs through uh, this method. So instead, I looked at the internet for uh, other alternative methods. And this seems like some sort of a technology-assisted meditation. It's a very simple idea. All you do is you just open up a Word document, increase the font size as much as you like, and just like type this question, and type out whatever comes to your mind right after that. And read your answer. If it does not make you cry, then it's a wrong answer. Just like raise it and try again. Keep doing that again and again and again till you actually write something that makes you stop and cry. Like your hair raises, just like stop and cry. It's very powerful. I mean, it sounds like it's, it's really powerful. And of course, I gave it my best shot. Um, I think I got a lot of very good insights from this method. Uh, but I actually did not end up crying, which was, I was like crying for the fact that I could not cry. Um, so that happens to be an irony there. So um, I hope that this will work for at least some of you. And if you have like a strong calling, uh, this process I think is very effective to uncover that. So um, should definitely try out this method. You know what the scene is, right? I mean, it's such a famous scene. It's so ubiquitous. So this is from the movie Braveheart. And the reason I put it up here is to show how like, you know, even other people inspire other people. So when he's asking the other Scotsman to go to, uh, to war, He's not talking about the what. He's not telling them, like, let's go to war. He's not telling them the how either. He doesn't tell, like, you know, the left flank, you come with me, right flank, you go this way, center flank, you do whatever. He's not even talking about the process. He just talks about the why. In this case, it happens to be uh, they're fighting for freedom. So that's the power of the why. I mean, once you have a strong why, then you can really draw a lot of people. So don't focus on the what and don't focus on the how. First, focus on the why. Once you can really realize it and you can communicate it, I think it's very easy to communicate the how and what. All that is very important, needs to follow, but it never starts off with the what or the how. And uh, the reason I put up this slide is because maybe you can get some clues from movies. Just like sit back and think about the movies that actually made you cry and like move you in a fundamental way. And think about what are the values that are being represented in those movies. And dig a little bit more deeper, ask more clarifying questions to yourself. And maybe you can uncover one or two like hidden facts about yourself as to what are your fundamental values by just looking at movies. It might seem like a simple idea, but I think it's effective. It's not the end of my presentation. Sorry to, uh, sorry to disappoint you. I mean, the reason I put this picture over here uh, is to show that sometimes your priorities especially uh, become much clearer when you know that you don't have infinite time. I think it's an idea that uh, even Steve Jobs explored, um, and I think it has recurred in many other um, famous themes, which is basically you imagine yourself not living forever. Um, so let's say you want to think of yourself living for only 10 more years, or even worse, like five more years, or even worse, one more year, or even worse, like a month. What are the things that you would do? Then suddenly you'll see that some of the things that you thought were very important are not important to you anymore. And some of the things that you thought were smaller details become like the biggest details in your life. You can even push the argument to a day or to a week. Thank <laughs> you.